That is what a one gigapixel camera looks like. Good afternoon. I'm Rolf Winkler. Welcome to Digits. Uh, and we're going to jump right in here. We've got Gautam Nike from the Wall Street Journal telling us about this camera. Gautam, I think we've also got an image of what a photo actually looks like coming from this, this one gigapixel camera. Um, tell us a little bit about it. This is an experimental camera from Duke University. That's right. As a team of uh, scientists at Duke University have built a prototype of what perhaps is the first uh, soup to nuts gigapixel camera. What that is, is a camera that's about 30 times more powerful than the best digital SLR you could get on the market today. And so when we're talking about 30 times better than the best SLR, talk to me in pixels, right? Is this is this is how many pixels relative to what we can get out of that best SLR? Right. So today, I think uh, the top line of digital SLRs probably comes in at 15, 20, 25 megapixels. A megapixel is a million pixels. The camera that the Duke University team has put together uh, has a billion pixels. So that's roughly five times more resolution than the human eye can see if you have 20-20 vision. So that's interesting. Five times more resolution than the human eye can see. And I would ask, what's the point? Right. Well, if you were doing uh, aerial uh, reconnaissance, if you wanted to get a view of a landscape and be able to zoom in on any aspect of it in incredible detail, this is the kind of camera that would let you do Galvin, that. Galvin, let me jump in quickly. We're just to let viewers know at home that we're actually looking right now, I think, at an image of what this camera can actually take. And, and like, you're, like as you're describing, we're zooming very, we're zooming in very, very tightly, and you can see some amazing detail. Right. way out in the distance but please continue yes yeah, so so it's very important because this is going to change the way photography and even uh, videography takes place so this camera first of all can take both video images as well as if you extract a still from it it's a very powerful still camera now the way we do photo photography today say is you try and find something in a scene that you think is worth photographing you point your camera lens at it and you click the shutter what this camera you would just take a picture of the entire scene and later on you download it to your computer, use software to home in on any area of this entire wide angle view landscape and then crop whatever you think is a good picture and the beauty of it is that it would render that part of the picture in extreme high resolution. I should also add that, you know, purists and even a lot of regular folk would argue that this is going to ruin the craft of photography because no longer are you looking for a picture. You just take a photograph of the entire scene and then go and find it later on. Will it really be that simple for a photographer? I mean, you've got to judge your light. You've got to, there's, there's a lot of talent when it comes to taking a photo. Will it really be as simple as just pointing your camera at something and uh, just taking the whole scene? Well, from the point of view of trying to be at the right place, like, you know, Henri Cartier-Bresson, the famous street photographer, said, you know, the de decisive moment, being right at the right time. This camera lets you simply just stand in a marketplace, for example, and take a picture of the entire scene with one click of the shutter. And then you can go and later on and find oh, that fascinating little conversation or something happening in the scene, and that could be your picture. You can crop that. Um, however, when it comes to uh, uh, video, uh, let's say you you're watching a tennis match and you could be focusing on Roger Federer and then at the same time a plane is flying half a mile away and you can then zoom in onto the airplane and say that it's, you know, a British airplane's, uh, British Airways plane. So that's the kind of thing you could do with video. Okay. Now, Gautam, tell us how long will it be before I could actually buy this kind of camera? Right, so I have to emphasize it's just a scientific prototype. It's just been built in the lab. It's pretty large. It's about the size of two microwave ovens, one stacked on top of the other. The current prototype only takes black and white pictures, but they're working on a color one, and they should have that ready by the end of the year. And it's going to take a long time to get a handheld consumer version. And the reason is the electronics take up a lot of space. The optics don't, but the electronics do, and they also require tremendous amount of power and ex uh, have a lot of heat coming out of it. So you need a large box to contain it. So right now, it has to sit on the floor or mounted on a very, very strong pole for it to be workable. But uh, scientists are gambling that with these things, as with these things, uh, the circuit boards will come down in size and all the other components will diminish in size and well. And mm -hmm. maybe one day we'll have a handheld camera that can render a billion pixels. Yeah, you'll get something like Moore's Law with you get with chips, where every year they kind of double in speed. Thank you, Galtham. Very, very much for joining us. Fascinating story.